What up, YouTube? It's your boy, it's Carter TV, back with chapter six. Secret of the Street, just chapter is called Inside Man. We start this chapter with Spider. You feel me? I remember Spider. He was hiding out Dale. Uh, he actually went against Dale and tried to get Dale lined up for that money. And that shit turned bad for him. Then he also tried to tell the feds that Dad was the attempt on his murder that was on his life. So ever since then, Spider was laying low, you know, making his side money until this war happened. And he felt like it's time for him to make a bigger, a better move and get back in tune with the streets. So Spider joins the, the fight in the streets between Fidel and D-Bear. D you feel me? He went to Tony. He went to Tony. He basically was like, Tony, I want to join your winning team. I want to join your, your whatever you got going on here. And Tony was like, you know, this is like, this is mostly a woman's type of thing. But he was like, you know, you're going to need a, a man push come to shove around. So basically, Spider wanted to join Tony's team and be under her organization. You know what I'm saying? Um, he, he wanted to join up with her. He felt like she was going to win some way, somehow. She's going to come out on top. Plus, he knew about her more than he knew about these two niggas from Jersey, from out of town. Like, So, he felt like he'll join a team, his home team, instead of joining some random shit. So, basically, what Tony decides to do, she was like, you want to join my team? I need you to do me a favor. So, he's like, I'm all in. Off rip, he's all in. You know what I'm saying? So, she was basically like, I need you to join Felipe's team. And tell me what goes on from the inside out. And certain situations and certain things that might happen. I'm going to need you to take care because you're already inside. He said, what if they find out about me? She goes, make sure they don't. Make sure they don't. You want to join my team? This is what I want you to do. So she was, he was like, all right, I agree to it. He agreed to go over to Felipe's squad. So he heads over to Felipe and them team. And he basically tells Felipe... I got the drop on Tony and everything, and I could get you to her. I could get you close to her. Remember, Felipe did not know a lot about Tony, but the fact that she run the town. You know what I'm saying? Felipe did not know much. Spider comes in, and he basically feeds him more information than he's bargained for. Sheena steps in. You know, Sheena steps in. He looks. Spider see her and was like, oh, shit. What the fuck? The feds? What you doing? So he was like, Felipe was like, oh, chill. Calm down. She's my cousin. She works for me. So that puts Spider at ease. You feel me? Spider like, oh shit, you got the police in your pocket? You moving like you moving like how boss used to move and shit like that. He like boss. Who this boss cat? He like boss some nigga who used to run a town and he used to be married to Tony. Now Tony is much higher than she is. So he like, what you mean? Explain. He basically give him the rundown. It was like Tony killed the major dude out here. And she became a part of this big organization that could really get you touched. But being that you got the cartel in your pocket, it's hard to get to you. So he was like, oh, she's a part of a bigger thing. She's like, yeah, she's a part of a, something way bigger than what it is. So Felipe didn't know that. And the cousin didn't know that. Sheena, Sheena was like, oh, this organization, I heard about them. I heard they're like the untouchables or some shit like that. She said, yeah, you want one of them. You got to actually... You got to go to war with the law for them. So he like, how you know us? He's like, man, I lived in this town all my life. I know these streets. I know what goes on. So he like, all right, cool. All right. He said, and then Spider goes, I fed you this information just to let you know I'm joining your team. I want to join you. I figure you going to be the man to come out on top and kill that bitch, Tony. And with my help and with my little bit of information, you going to get there. He said, oh, all right, I like how you're talking, but you got to prove yourself. And he said, I I'm doing whatever it takes. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing whatever it takes. So he basically wanted him to prove himself. It was a cop lurking around. You know what I'm saying? It was a cop lurking around with Sheena. Sheena had left him in a car. He gets out the car to go see what Sheena's doing. She's in this abandoned building with these, with these other two dudes. And he sees some dude stick his head out to look around. So he, you know, the cop get, he go see what's, what's, what's the situation. He goes, he be nosy. And he ends up shooting at the dude and hitting him. Because the dude pulled out 
a Tech Nine on him and was spraying him. So they, the up, Felipe Spider and uh, Sheena here that's shooting. She go, oh shit, it's my partner. So basically, Felipe was like, no, 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 Sheena. Spider, you take care of him. Spider, you take care of him. So Spider go downstairs. He, Spider get in his bag. Basically, he put on some homeless clothes. You know what I mean? He act like he wanted a homeless man's in the bend and building. He come down like, what's going on over here? You know, he act like he a little crackhead and shit. And the police officer was like, stay back. Stay back. There's a body over there. The dude looking at him like, ah, my leg. I got shot. The dude is calling for backup. Or he's a making an attempt to until Spider throws a blanket over him. And the dude like, what the fuck? Spider picks up like some type of ranch and cracks the dude in his mouth. Boom. Drops him. Mm. The dude drops the gun. He picks it up. Sheena Felipe come downstairs. They see him. And he puts the trigger right to the dude's head and blow his brains out. Boom. He put two bullets in his mouth. Boom. Boom. Blow his shit the fuck off. Sheena like, what the fuck? <sighs> now Sheena got to write some shit up and figure that out because she was with him. And she's a detective. You feel me? So now Sheena got to put paperwork together to say what happened and this and that and the third. So Spider was like, I like how you proved yourself and you didn't hesitate. I need a soldier like you on my team. I need a soldier. So he's like, come with me. Let's go talk about Tony's next big move. So Sheena, and he was like, Sheena, clean this shit up. And he told homeboy on the floor, get up, go get patched up. We got a winning shit. To do. We got some winning shit to do. So now we go to Tony and Boss. You feel me? Tony and Boss, they're meeting in the park. They talking. And basically, Boss is now working under Tony now. You feel me? He basically came through. Was like, you know, I, I like how I gave you that information. He said that was she. Basically, he basically was like, that was you that fed my people's information. I said, yeah. He was like, what's your angle, boss? She basically cut to the chase. What's your angle? Cause you know, if you fuck me, I'm gonna cut your balls off and I'm gonna feed them to you. So what's your angle? And he's like, I'm trying to get back to where I was on top. I want to get back to the organization. She said that shit. That shit is long overdue and gone for you. I'm in that spot. I'm there now. I'm the top bitch here now. You want something? You go through me. So he basically like, Tony, this is how you going to do me? Like, come on now. We got a whole son together. He's not your son. I killed his father. Your best friend? I laid that motherfucker down because some shit you couldn't do. So boy, he like, she like, he like, yo, that's crazy. Like, and what about, what about KJ? Where is he? Oh, he in jail. He got to take his bed like the man. I had to, he, he know. He know the rules of the game. So then she gets a phone call about KJ, about KJ trying to either talk to the feds and get out. She couldn't have that. You feel me? She couldn't have that and everything. So she sends the kite out on KJ. Yo, green light him. And they green light KJ now. Now KJ in there. You feel me? So she gets word. And green light and boss hears this is like are you gonna green light your own son that's wicked man it is what it is the dog eat world out this motherfucker wait what you call me over here for so boss is basically like yo d bear making a move on you he making a move on you so he basically is like boss she basically was like boss if you want to join this organization that i'm building in this town you work for fucking me now you understand you work for me I'm the top bitch out here. What I want you to do, you let me know every move D-Bear is making. And you report it to me and I will take care of it. So he was like, yo, basically he already know Dale is a snitch or Dale saying something. So he basically got somebody I could throw the heat on. So she go perfect. That'll work to every aspect of my plan. For now, keep me posted on all his fucking moves. You understand? Everything that he do, every move he make, every money he earn, you let me the fuck know. And from that point on, boss knew his position. He knew for him to get back to the top, he had to take the sucker route. You understand know what I'm saying? So he was like, whatever. Get the fuck out of my face. And he, you know, she he basically walks off from her. So now we go to Charlie and Dale. And, you know, basically, Charlie... His mindset is to get at the organization. You know, him and Dale spoke about the situation. 
And he was like, yo, you know, Charlie, whatever you got planned, I'm riding with you, bro. I'm riding with you. So basically, Charlie Mon is to get at the organization off the strength that he already got three faces to a name. You understand what I'm saying? He did his homework on the organization. He know they he know they code names due to due to the fact of Tony's information. So now, basically, Dell is like, "What's your plan? What's your angle for this?" I said, "I'm gonna kill them, motherfuckers. They killed my mom and they got my father in a body bag as well. No motherfuckers is going down." So he basically get he told Victoria he go back to Victoria. He let her know, like, "Listen, I need you to get out of town for a few days." Um, go see some family, do something. I got shit I handle. I don't want you involved. I don't want the baby. You want the baby involved with nothing. Get out of town. You know, Destiny pulled up to the crib in the midst of them talking and was like, hey, girl, what's going on? And she like, I could use a vacation. So, in the midst of them talking, you know, sh she was like, hey, Destiny, can you give us a minute? Me and, you know, me and Charlie having a conversation. She's like, oh, I'm sorry, my bad. I'll be, you know, in the living room with anything. So, Charlie was like, you know, you and Destiny, get out of town for just a couple days. You know what I'm saying? Take flight, get up out of here. You feel me? Come on. She's like, Charlie, I can't just up and leave. We got a baby. I said, listen, I don't, whatever's about to go down in this town, it's about to get ugly. I don't want you around for it. I don't want my son around for this. You know what I mean? I'm putting an end to shit, and I want to make sure when this shit is all over, you and him is good money. So she like, listen to me and listen to me carefully. Get the fuck out of town. Here's a few bands. Go whatever, go wherever the fuck you want to go. And whenever you get there, you tell me, you call me. Hey, I landed in such and such. I'm here. That way I know you good. Nobody will know but me and you where you going. She said, I'm about to just take the baby up and leave. Yes. That's what the fuck you're going to do. So she's like, Charlie, really? Like, what about my job? Tell him you have a family emergency and you need to leave. So she was just like over it. And she was like, I want you out the streets. Trust me. When this shit is said and done and I meet you where you at, I'll be out the streets for good. You understand? This is where it ends. This is where it ends. I start my life fresh the fuck over. I promise you. She said, I'm going to hold you to that, Charlie. But where the fuck am I going to go? I don't know. Your homegirl's here. Maybe she'll shine some light on it. I'm going to talk to you later. And listen, pick a place. Be out of here by Sunday morning. You understand? Sunday morning. She said, Charlie, that's two days from now. I don't care. You got money. Good. Pack some clothes and get the fuck out of Dodge. Next time I call you, I'm coming to you and letting you know I'm where I'm at. You understand? So she was like, she said this so can Charlie leave. She's like, girl, you all right? She said, like, I don't know. Something's about to go down in this town and he want me out of here. So girl, what are you what you planning on doing? Like, she was like, girl, I got a vacation coming up soon. Like, where you wanna go? She's like, I don't know. But he really want me to go. He really want me going. So her and Destiny plan a flight to leave. They basically go to like Miami. You know, they plan a flight. They book a flight to Miami type situation. You feel me? They book a flight to Miami and they get out of she. They booked the flight Saturday night and they was out by Sunday morning. And they was gone. So he didn't have to worry about if somebody was trying to get at his family. He's good on that. end. You feel me? He good. Like, all right. So he basically called Dell and was like, oh, Dell, it's time to get the team back. He said, all right, cool. What's the move? You and Sticks meet up with me ASAP. So he's all right, bet. Sticks is under D Bear's eye because he's been hanging around Dell a lot. So Dell pulls up and D Bear's not happy with him. You feel me? He was like, yo, little motherfucker. You the nigga that they found out where that bitch was because of your ass. He was like, what the fuck is you talking about? I wasn't even here when all that shit went down. I was handling some personal shit. He's like, nah, it's so funny how you got personal shit coming up when niggas is in the midst of a shootout. When shit going south, your ass ain't never there. He said, so what you saying, d bear The fuck you saying? You saying I, I gave you up? You saying I'm diming you out out here? 
He said, that's what the fuck is looking like. Boss stepped in and was like, yeah. You know, all that shit you, you know, that's going down, you don't be around. You be disappearing, son. So he looking at boss like, yo, boss, kill me with all that bullshit. Whatever you got going on and you telling this nigga, you better stop before I blow your fucking head off. He said, nigga, I ain't the one on trial right now. Yo ass is, nigga. Yo ass is, nigga. You the one that keep disappearing when shit get left, when shit go left. So he like, I ain't even trying to hear all that. He said, nigga, I am, nigga. So d Bear pull out his pistol, sit on the table. He like, d Bear, it don't even got to go down like that. You feel me? It don't even got to go down like that. Sticks in the cut like, shit, what the fuck is about to go down? So he texting Charlie on the side like, yo, I think this nigga Dale about to get killed right before, right in front of my eyes, son. So Charlie like, what the fuck? Where y'all at? So he text, he text Charlie the location. By the time Charlie get there, shit already just erupt, right? Shit already erupt. They grab Dale. And as they grabbing Dale and holding him, he tussling. He get one dude off him. Boop! Get off me. Swing on the dude. Uppercut him. Boop! Drop him. Um, Boss tried to grab him, but when he tried to grab him, he kicked Boss in the knee, and Boss went down and just straight hooked him. Boom! Drop Boss. So that's when d Bear started letting off rounds. Bang, bang, bang. So he jumped behind the door and ducked out. Dale returned fire and started lighting up the room. From outside the room, he lighting the shit up. Boom, 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 boom. The niggas in the building hear the commotion. They come running. Dale got to get missing there. He, the niggas is coming towards him. He like, yo, it's a shoot. It's a niggas shooting in the office. Some niggas shooting in the office. He get by them niggas. He get by just a few about them niggas until d Bay come out. Yo, stop that nigga, son. The niggas turn around on him. Start bucking. He get down. He get missing. Whoop, whoop. He hit the second floor of the building. Jump the window. Charlie's just getting over there. He see the nigga. He see him take flight. He see him running. So when he see him running, he see another nigga come out and start bucking at him. Boof, boof, boof. Charlie drew his hand out and started shooting. Doop, 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 doop. And he hit the nigga. Uh, uh. He hit the nigga from the blind side. Boom, boom. So Dale get missing. And Dale see him. And then they, and he split. So the nigga's like, yo, that nigga was shooting at us too. Boom, boom, boom. So niggas come out and start shooting in different directions. One shooting at Charlie, one shooting at Dale. They both dead, escape. So d Bell was like, I need that nigga's head on a platter. The fuck did they? I need his head on a fucking platter. Find out who that other motherfucking shooter is. So he looked at Sticks and was like, yo, that's your man's, right? You came on this team with that nigga, right? But was like, yeah, you was people's. Where you think he gonna go? I don't know, man. I don't know, man. So boss looking at him and he said, this ain't the time to be funny, motherfucker. You'll get your dick cut off right here. He said, nah, man, I really don't know. I really don't know. So Dell is calling him right in front of both of these niggas. He's like, yo, pick it up. He's like, yo, Sticks, I need to meet up with you ASAP. He's like, all right, bro, where you at? He tell him the location. Meet me at this time, you heard? He's like, all right, bet. So go to Dell and Charlie. He's like, you called this nigga. He's still in the building. He probably with them niggas. They gonna come find you because of this nigga. He said, that's what I want them to do. That's what I want them to do. These niggas is trying to kill me. And boss, he on this shit, son. He brewing his own fucking plan. I knew he was up to some bullshit. I said, he, he, he doing some sneak shit. He doing some sneaky shit. So I said, as long as you know a little bit of information about them niggas, we can maneuver. You know what I'm saying? Other than that, we got to figure out some shit now. So now we go to Detective Johnson. He go to visit KJ, trying to figure out what's the next big move for him. So he telling KJ, he was like, yo, word is, your mother green-lighted you. He like, what? The fuck you mean she green-lighted me? Apparently she found out you working for the feds in here. You might want to watch your back. He said, you serious, man? You got to get me the fuck up out of here. If I'm, if I'm in here, they can get to me so much faster, man. You got to get me out of here, B. So he like, shit's going to be hard, man. So when the state's attorneys found out that KJ was going, you know, flip on his moms, they had to figure out a move. So what they did was they sent in a fake cop in the jails to join one of these, these teams that was going to kill KJ so he can get to him. So when he got to KJ, he fake killed him. I mean, he put KJ to sleep. 
He put a fake body in his cell and he torched it. Took KJ out and they got him out the jail. You feel me? So Tony automatically thought when they found out, when the niggas in his cell found out, they sent her the kite and was like, yo, they burnt his ass alive. So she hung up the phone. She turned around and she shot a tear down because she just lost her son. So when she got that word, shit could move much smoother now. They got him out the jail and they moved him some in, somewhere into protective custody now. They had to get him out. So he looking at Detective Johnson and said, being that I got you out of protective custody, nigga, you better start telling me everything you, you know about what your mother organization is and what all the organizations out there that she could be a part of. So he was like, you already know, I'm, I'm, I'm coming clean. I'm telling it all. This bitch tried to fucking kill me. This bitch tried to fucking kill me? Her son? She got me all the way fucked up. She know I give it up savage. So the officer's just looking at him. And then he started, he started talking. He started telling, he started taking the cheese, you feel me? So now we go to the organization. And they're still trying to figure out how they want to move on Tony. And they get wind that a lot of product is being sold, but it's not being sold from them. They got these outside cats coming in taking over shit and a lot of they losing a lot of money in the drug game right now plus caruso was selling them guns which he hasn't been found nowhere lately he's been he disappeared off the face of the earth his his pops who was supposed to be also doing business with the organization he stopped doing business with them due to the fact that his son is missing and he know his son is somewhere around he need to find him um Basically, his pops was, was trying to find both of them. You know, one of them was going to get their head cut off, and one of them also had some explaining to do. You know what I'm saying? So, he, he reached out to the organization and was like, I need to find both my sons. One of them is running for me, and one of them is somewhere out here in these streets, and I need to find them before somebody else gets to them. So, the organization think of a plan, right? They think of a plan of killing his son and putting the blame on Tony. So they come together after that phone call from, you know, Caruso's pops and shit. Uh, they was like, maybe we should get rid of that little motherfucker that he's looking for. Put the blame on Tony so that way we'll have somebody to kill him. You know what I'm saying? So they thinking about a plan now. And Mr. Rico was like, so what's going on with that kid CJ, you know? You know, we spoke to him one time and after that we really ain't hear from him like that. He says, it's been a couple days. But we should reach out to him. You know, we should go see him, invite him out, and see what else he knows what's going on in his town. So, Mr. Bleak, he reaches out to CJ. You know what I'm saying? He reaches out He reaches out to him. CJ is also Charlie. He told him a fake name. So, Charlie then picks it up. He's like, yo, who this? He's like, hey, man, it's, you know, it's, uh, he, the dude gave him the, it's a real estate name. And he was just like, you know, I ain't really hear from you like that. You are, right? he's like, I've just been dealing with some family issues and shit like that. But what's, what's up, man? How you guys doing? You know, how's, how's the, you know, real estate business and all that? And, you know, casino. He's like, it's growing. But, you know, we kind of came into a dilemma. We also could use your advice on it. Would you mind meeting us for some lunch? So the dude, so Charlie was like, meet you for some lunch. Huh? I was like, all right, cool. Where? So they meet, they meet at Red Lobster type shit. Regular casual spot. He basically tell Dale, come with me, but I need you hiding out. These three guys that I'm out to meet, they're the organization. You're going to know their face just as well as I'm going to know their face. So that way, when shit hit the fan, you know who they aim for. So he like, all right, boom. Dale goes first. He goes in there. He goes to the bar part of the restaurant. He sits there. He orders a drink and he orders a meal. Charlie strolls in about 45 minutes later. The organization people already there. They was there before Dale got there. They see him and they think he's some regular casual dude. Charlie come in. They spot Charlie. Boom. Once they spot, once Dale and Charlie see eyes and then he see them, Dale know who they was now. You know what I'm saying? He got faces to, to the people now. The organization. Wow. Those are the people. I could have sworn it was five of them. That means it's the, a fourth member ain't there. Hmm. I hope Charlie find out who, this, who that fourth person is. So he meet up with them and they talking and he basically telling like, 
you know, Tony got some shit going on in the town recently. Her, her niece was kidnapped. He was like, what? They like, for real? Wow, she really dealing with some family issues here. And then Tony, and then Charlie basically asked, like, why y'all so invested into this lady? She ain't your type of tea, judging from the way y'all moving around. He said, well, basically, a lot of people don't want to, you know, take business out here in this neck of the woods because they know it's a lot of drugs going on. It's a lot of gun violence out here. So, you know, we want to take very precaution and make sure we can find a way to remove her from the situation so that we can do business here and everything will move over smooth. So they was like, oh, okay, that sounds pretty fair enough. Charlie was like kind of brushing it off because in his mind was playing back as the fact that Tony told him some shit. Now he looking at all three of these guys suspect. So now with that in the back of his mind, you know, um, Charlie, the two guys, Mr. Rico and um, Mr. Jims, they decide to leave. They got the information they need to make moves. They all three look at each other. They give each other the nod. Charlie peeked in that they had that little inside moment of silence talk with each other with their eyes. So Mr. Rico and Jim and Mr. Jim, they decided to move forward with taking down Tony. And they decided to start calling up people to send out hits on her now. So they left and was like, hey, I'm glad to know that you know you feed us information. We really appreciate it. Now that we got what we need, we're going to move forward. Um, Mr. Rico left. He went to go make his phone call and his arrangements. Mr. Jim, he missed, he left and missed to make a phone call arrangements. So it's just Mr. Bleak and Charlie sitting at the table now. And he's like, how come they left? Like he said, they probably got some shit they needed to, to, you know, handle before anything goes get taken care of. He said, um, Charlie goes, you know, being that you here by yourself now, and it's just me and you. Charlie looked at him like, tell me who you really is. So the dude looked at him like, what do you mean? I'm a real estate agent, man. I, I sell cribs, you know, I, I do, you know, real business. Like, Charlie looked at the dude like, nah, you somebody else. He said, kid, I don't know who you talking about. Your food's here, here. Here's some money for your food, man. Enjoy. So he's walking past Charlie. He said, I know who the fuck you are, Mr. Blake. The dude then stopped in his tracks and was like, turned slide eye, look back. Please come back and have a seat. We got some things we need to discuss as they both lock eyes with each other. So that, you know, Mr. Bleak come back and sit down and he looking around to see if anybody looking at them. He was like, how the fuck you know that name? Mm. So he goes, she was right about your reaction too. He's like, she, Tony told me who y'all was. Oh, what you think? I'm just some, some ordinary nigga out here. <laughs> so he was like, so then Mr. Bleak put a put a name to his face now. You Charlie. Mm. So who's CJ? Just a name. Mr. Bleak. You part of that organization and my mother killed. He said, wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. Watch your mouth. You know, there's people in here. I said, I don't give a fuck about them. I'll body you right here, nigga. He said, that won't be so wise. My companions will come get you. They will haunt you down. Your companions, huh? <laughs> Your fucking companions, huh? You motherfuckers took out my moms and my father. He said, whatever Tony telling you, she lied, bruh. She lied to you, man. Yeah. But she was one thing she was right about was your name. And judging from your reaction, that's all the truth I need. He's like, listen, listen, listen. You getting a little hasty here. Charlie then backed out his pistol on the table and covered it with a napkin. He's like, listen, man, you being hasty here. You being real hasty. Mr. Bleak started sliding out the seat. He's like, where you going? Please have a seat. Don't go. I ain't finished my food. The waitress was walking by, and when the waitress walked by, she had a plate of food, which he then tossed her on Charlie, and he dipped out. Pew! He ran out of there. So the lady was like, oh, my God, are you okay? Charlie cleaned himself off. I'm good. I'm good. You all right? So he was like, who, 
who this belong to? He's like, that's that for that family over there. Here, I'll pay for their meal and whatever else they ordered. So he threw about good $300 on the table for the meal and, and, and whatever's there, you keep the tip, miss. So she was like, thank you. You sure you're all right, sir? He cleaning off all the food. He's like, yeah, don't worry about it. I'm good. So Mr. Bleak peeled off. He got out of Dodge. Dale was like, what happened? I'm bringing the fire to that ass, nigga. Let's go get these motherfuckers now. So now that they're about to go after them niggas, it's on. Mr. Bleak is on the road. He moving. He calls Mr. He, he calls the whole group, except for Tony. He called the group. None of them pick up. Hey, guys, you got to answer the phone fast. It's an emergency. Charlie knows who we are. He's coming after us, and he's not playing games. We got to make a move now. We got to take him out, and we got to take out Tony. So, Mrs. Indigo, you know what I'm saying? She's been low-key quiet. She's watching a lot of this chaos taking, taking toll. And she decides to step in and throw her two cents in it, and she speaks to Tony. And she goes, you know, hey, Tony. She pulls up to Tony's office, you know, her her situation. I see that a lot is going on out here. She said, yeah, nothing, nothing again. You know, be taken care of. You know, I'm making my moves. Uh, word is, Charlie know who we are. So Tony, Tony looks at him and was like, no, no, no. Tony knows who those three guys are. He don't know about you yet. Oh, okay. Um, you might want to listen to this. So she's playing back a message Mr. Bleak left. Tony, Charlie's coming for us. We need to take out Tony and Charlie now. We need to do it ASAP. We need to do it ASAP. And Mrs. Indigo, if you're listening, you better be on board with us. You better be on board with us. So she go, what you going to do? <sighs> Mrs. Indigo takes a breath. She inhales. I'm going to do what I do most best. We in this together, right? So Tony... Tony uses her kinda in this situation. She kinda was like, yes, we are. She goes, sits in, she sits on her desk, you know, Mr. Indigo sitting right in front of the desk. And she sits in front of her with her legs open. Tony ain't got no panties on. So Mrs. Indigo sees that and was like, oh, we are in this together, right? Ms. Indigo, me and you, we run this whole organization. We take over all these places. We split it 50-50 and we become them dominant bitches. She said, oh, you offer me a partnership? How, how you want this partnership? On this table or on that floor? She said, on that table. They start kissing and having sex now. Boop, 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 boop. They seal their partnership. And after, you know, they have, you know, they have sex and everything, she, Miss Tony goes, I need you to do me a favor. She goes, what you need? I need you to give up the location those three men and hand it over to Charlie. Let Charlie find him, take them out. We kill two birds with one stone. And when he takes them out, we'll also take him out. That way the whole family is going, we won't have nothing to worry about. So Mrs. Indigo was like, I like that idea. I'll put it in motion. So now we go to Mink, who's still, you know, in the streets and everything. And Sticks has to go look for he has to go look for Dale. It's been a few days since you know that situation with D Bear. He has to go look for him. D Bear tells him, "Don't come back to this fucking building until you find where the fuck he's at." Cause he told Sticks to meet him at a location, was he never showed up. Dale never showed up to the location due to the fact that him and Charlie went to go do something else. And Sticks was there, and he also had the goons lurking out. As soon as Dale pop out, they was gonna get at him. And I think D Bear was also gonna kill Sticks right there at that moment. You feel me? So now that D Bear had to get him out the way, he also had to still make money, which a lot of men money wasn't making in the town because a lot of the war was going on. So Felipe and D Bear decided to hold off, both hold off on the war and started to actually make money and started out pushing out their weight so they could start making his money back. Boss seen that happen. Spider see it happening now. So both two inside men see it and they reporting to Tony about what's going on. So these guys is at these spots trying to make this money, 
Tony is sending her goons to take over every spot that they got. Boop, 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 boop. Every transaction has happened. They they robbing them. Um, every gun, you know, every gun connect or every gun being sold is being snatched from both sides. And D Bear and Fleet Bear is just like, how the fuck are we keep getting robbed? How the fuck they keep knowing all our locations? What the fuck is going on? So Tony is making her move. You know what I'm saying? She's bringing the war to these guys. They don't even know what's hitting them right now. That is crazy. Sheena and Detective Johnson. Johnson wasn't with Sheena for a couple days. You know, it's been like a couple weeks and she's just basically been on her own. She lost one of the little uh, police officers that she had with her. And, you know, Johnson finally comes back into the picture with her and was basically like, yo, what's been going on around here? You know, she was like an officer died not too long ago. He was in the abandoned building on his own. You know, I guess he saw something and they killed him. Somebody killed him. So they was always, they, they was wearing they, their badge with that black stripe over it, you know, for Officer Down type situation, if you've seen that. And it was like, wow, there's a lot going on around here. And yeah, and you know, the Lieutenant was just like, you know, your partner was there when the situation occurred. And I feel like she needs to be investigated because a lot of killing and a lot of, a lot of these guys are being let off due to the fact that since she came aboard, so the lieutenant was talking to Detective Johnson about it low key. And when he was talking to her about it, um, Johnson was looking at her and she was locking eyes with him. And they was both, and she kind of was like, why are you looking at me like that? And when he was looking at her, the captain was just like, hey, stay here, stay focused. He was like, basically, he's like, oh, cat, to be perfectly honest with you, remember when that, that shooting occurred and that little boy got killed? At that uh, at that plaza, he was like, "Yeah, um, those guys got let off on a technicality because of Sheena." He was like, "Yeah, I thought the report said something different." Nah, I think she flamed the flamboyant the 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 report so they could get off. Plus, what I also noticed, she's related to this dude named Felipe, who who's running these streets. Where well, his name is Garcia, change the name. So he like, wait a minute. You saying we got a detective in here that's working for a cartel man out there in these streets? He said, yeah, all I need is proof. He said, well, you know you good for getting it. Find out what you can find out. Find out what you can find out because I hate dirty fucking cops. He said, I'm on it, cat. I'm on it. So now Sheena, I guess she got wind of what's about to go down. They probably on to her now. She got to make a move on Detective Johnson, getting him killed, man. She tried to do it the first time. Shit went left. You feel me? Shit went left. You feel me? Um, dudes couldn't get him. Now, this time, they was going to be out in the streets. She felt like she was going to get him missing. And this is a perfect time. She might have to take a bullet or two. But as long as he was down, she was, he, she was golden. And before, before the... This next situation that's about to occur happened. Um, Johnson was like, "Listen, partner, come with me. I gotta, I gotta write up on a report. Maybe we should go check it, check it out." So she's like, "What's the four one one? It's about those guys you let off. Um, one of them was shot in in the in the leg regarding regarding the dude you was with, and he's willing to come clean." She was like, "What? He willing to come clean? That don't." That don't even sound right. Like she, she, she ain't a bugger now. She ain't like, what the fuck is going on? What the fuck is going on? Right? Um. So she ain't like, what the fuck? So she was like, all right, I'm gonna go to the bathroom and then I will meet you on the call. She go to the phone. She was like, hey, Felipe, one of the dudes is flipping. We need him going. Also, I got my partner on the road with me. I'm gonna see on the location so we can, so we can finish this job and being investigated. I'm being investigated. Some shit is going down. So Felipe was all right. Let me know your location. I'm gonna send the hitters. Boom. She dip out, jump in the car. You ready to go, partner? She was like, "You good?" He's like, "Yeah, I was drinking a lot of." She was like, "Basically, I was drinking a lot of water, but let's go." So they go to meet up, try to meet up with homeboy who was trying to flip. When they get there, he's dead. He's 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 killed for whatever reason. Um, and. They get to the house and it's the house is like kind of broken into and they both pull out their guns and they search the crib. 
They find a dead man that they were supposed to be talking to. They find him on the floor dead. And they both calm down. It was like they call it in. And they also hear something upstairs in the house. So the check jumps on, you hear that? She was like, yeah, I did. Somebody else is still here. So she she goes downstairs. She's like, I check downstairs. You check upstairs. So he goes upstairs. He's looking around. He's looking around. He's looking around. And it was just the dog. The dog was just there. Mind you, there's three guys in the crib hiding out. But backup arrives already. So they couldn't do nothing. So what they do, they sit on it. They wait. And Detective Johnson goes downstairs. You know what I'm saying? He goes downstairs. They call it in. They jump back in the car. Um, he like, she goes, did you find anything? And she was like, nah. He goes, nah, I ain't find nothing. Um, he basically goes, Sheena, I need to know. She goes, need to know what? Is Felipe your cousin? She goes, what? Where'd that come from? She goes, you know, to be honest with you, partner, I did a background check on you. And, we're, and, you know, what I found out is you and him is related. She's like, nah, you got to be kidding me. I think that's probably another Felipe. It could be another one. It could be another one. I said, he changed his name to Felipe. His real name is Garcia. So she was like, Garcia, isn't that your last name, Sheena Garcia? He's like, partner, you tripping. That ain't, we ain't, there's no relation. I don't know that man. I don't know that man. Are you sure? She's like, I'm positive. I don't know that man. I don't know that man. So... Boom, the situation occurred where they're driving. She was like, let's go get something to eat. I'm kind of hungry. So they driving, right? They come to a red light. A car come up, starts. A dude run up on the car, on the bike. He was on the bike. He run up on the car. And he starts spraying inside the car. Boop, 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 boop. He hit Detective Johnson two times. One in the arm and one in the chest. Boom, he slumped over. Sheena gets hit in the leg and she get hit in like her wrist. And when she get hit in the wrist, her partner instantly go down. He go down. Uh, he get hit. And the dude hit Sheena and then she kind of like was trying to draw him off. Like, that's enough. That's enough. She opened the door, jump out. And the dude see that Detective Johnson is dead. So he see that he's dead. She jumps out and she looking like, and the dude looking at her. Shaking his head, Detective Johnson peek his eye up to see what the dude looked like and get a glimpse at him and fades back out. Detective Johnson called for backup. Officer down, officer down. I need help. I need assistance at such and such place, such and such place. The ambulance arrived later. The captain comes and hits the streets. I was like, what's going on? Detective Johnson was hit. Is he dead? No, we got a pulse, sir. He's going to make it. So Sheena was like, oh, fuck me. He's going to make it. They rush him to the ER. They get surgery done on him. Bang, bada, boom. Um, he survives the shooting. And now the detective, the captain was like, whoever that fucking guy was, Sheena, you better fucking find him. That's your partner, and he almost, almost lost his fucking life tonight. I can't lose too many more of these motherfucking officers. I need answers. I need solutions, and I need it now. I want all cops out there on the street finding this motherfucker. Now, get moving. Now the feds is in the now the feds is in the picture. The feds is talking to the captain. He's like, "What's going on?" Captain basically was like, "I got a dirty cop on my team. She was shot tonight. Her partner was shot in an attempt to kill his life. I guess he confronted her about the situation. She took action. I don't want nobody to move on her just yet until we get word from Detective Johnson with his information, so that we could put her down for good. So now they making a move on Sheena." You know what I'm saying? They they investigating Sheena from the inside out. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of shit is going down now. A lot of shit is taking fold. A lot of shit is crumbling from the inside out. So Detective Johnson pulls through. You know, he spends a couple days in the ER. I mean, and he spends a couple days in the hospital. You know, he spends a couple days in there and he gets... He gets better. He gets better enough to, to start speaking. And, you know, he's talking to his captain. He's like, I got to look at the dude. I got to look at the dude. She was like, oh, okay. You got to look at him. Where's Sheena? She's out running the streets. Um, What happened? 
he basically was like, "Cat, I, I confronted her on it, and next thing I know, we was at a light. A guy pull up on the car, on, on, on the car, on the bicycle, and start spraying. After that, I blacked out. I don't know what else happened after that. He said, "All right, well, it's good that you're here. It's good that you you willing to get back out there into the fight run. Right now, I just need you to recover, stay low key." If Sheena put the hit out on you to, to save her own ass, we're going to get her. Trust and believe. We're going to get her. So he was like, Cat, the moment I could get back into it, I'm not staying home. I'm getting back out there. I got another dirty cop on my hands. And I can't let her breathe. I can't let her walk these streets. No getaway what she tried to do to me. So Detective Johnson also has a girlfriend, right? And his girlfriend is pregnant. So she shows up at the hospital. And the, or, uh, the captain didn't even know about her. He kept her discreet. Because for situations like this. He kept her quiet. He kept her under the radar. She finds out. They're expecting a little girl on the way. And she was kind of like in panic mode. Because she, when she heard he got shot. Um, somebody at the station told her. Because she didn't come, he didn't come home for like a few days. So she kind of had to go figure out where he was. And they told her at the station he's been shot. So she came to the hospital, she seen him, and the captain was like, who are you? She was like, I'm, I'm his girlfriend, you know, that's my boyfriend, we got the kid on the way. And basically, um, she was she was worried about him. So he was like, I didn't even know you had a lady, I didn't even know you was having a kid, congratulations. He was like, yeah, I tried to keep her from it. You know, so far I was doing good until this, this shooting happened. So she was like, this is the second time you done been shot, maybe it's about time you, you take a break from this cop hero shit. She's kind of going off because, you know, she's pregnant and she's emotional. She's upset. So the captain's like, I'll leave you to it. She was like, what's it this time? Was it because of that boy, Charlie? He's like, no, not this time. I got a dirty partner. So he basically come clean about what his next move is. And she was just against it because she want her baby to have both parents. You know what I'm saying? So he was just like, you know, I'm a cop. I got to protect and, you know, I got to do what's right for what I believe in. And she was just like, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't want to lose you. She was, he was like, you're not going to lose me. You're going to lose me to old age. You're not going to lose me to these streets. And um, he digs in his pocket. He pulls out a ring. She was like, what? Are you serious? Right now? She said, no, you probably just a little under the weather. You probably get scared straight. You probably that bullet going through. She's like, no. That day I got shot, I was gonna come home and propose to you until this happened. I wanna make I want I wanna marry you. So that kind of brought relief to her, and she was like, Yes, I'll marry you. They got engaged. So boom, now we go to uh Mink, who was out in the streets yet again, trying to find his way back to Charlie, trying to find his way back to something because now he's just been in the streets for dumb long. You feel me? He's been in the streets for dumb long and shit is getting hectic. He comes across sticks, right? He comes across sticks and he sees sticks, but he sees sticks from a distance. He's like, I know that nigga. That's sticks. Oh shit, let me run up to him. Sticks dips off and sticks is walking. So he follows sticks to, to see where he's going. Sticks is also being followed by D Bear's crew. You know what I'm saying? Six is being followed by D Bear's crew. And Six is actually going to meet up with Charlie and Dale. They're going to fill him in and shit. So he meets up with them. And it's been a couple of days since D Bear heard about what happened with Dale and shit. Like he just kind of just went off the face of the earth. Um, Basically, what had happened now is they meet up, they're talking, all three of them. And they're basically filling Sticks in what's about to take place. Now, the dudes who was following Sticks is about six dudes following him. They follow him. They see him. They see him talking to Dell, And they see him talking to Charlie, which they didn't know who Charlie was. They thought he was just one of Dell's mans or somebody. So they called d Bear. was like, listen, we see Sticks. He's talking to Dell and some other cat. So boss is like, who the, who the other cat is? What he look like? They described Charlie. He was like, I know that little nigga. That's Charlie. So Sticks might be in it on with them. So he like, with them? What the fuck you talking about? 
Listen, they, they they tried to take me down last time. All three of them cats. You got to get rid of all them niggas now. Send them boys in. So, them boys start rolling in, and they pull out on them. Boop. And he's like, oh, Sticks, we knew you was a fuck boy, too. Now that we got you niggas, y'all niggas is grass. So, them niggas is like, oh, shit. A shootout, bang out happened. Boop, 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 boop. Them niggas getting low. They getting missing. Shit. They like down. They 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 only got three guns and them niggas got AKs and ARs and they letting shit ring. Boop, boop, boop. They got these niggas pinned down. Mink see this shit go down and he steps up. He cracks one of the dudes. Boop. And start. He takes the eight. He's take the AK from one of the dudes and start letting shit ring. Boom, 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 boom. And killing all or killing the rest of them. Boop, 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 boop. And start killing them. So Charlie Dell and Sticks look at each other like, what the fuck was that? They get up. And they see Mink. And they was like, oh, shit. They are blown away by seeing him because they thought something happened to him. And they like, Mink. And that's what we in the chapter. That's crazy, baby.